Hello, I am Jorge Escobar. Welcome back to the Learn to Code podcast. Today, um, I may like to talk about the subject, programming is not for everyone. Well, I may like to think that uh, coding or programming is at the reach of everybody willing. But, but then again, uh, there has been com entire campaigns uh, talking about the subject of, you know, maybe everybody should learn to code. And for a short time, uh, I really liked the idea of uh, every single person learning to code. But then I realized that uh, uh, from my own experience, learning to code is a hard thing to do. Uh, not just coding itself, but actually learning how to do it properly is uh, is quite hard. And it's not um, an interest that many people share, not really. Uh, and the fact remains that there is a lot of people looking for software developers in the in the marketplace, in the job marketplace, but uh, uh, not many people actually qualify and the ones that do uh well most of them most of them most of us must struggle with the fact that we need to learn how to do our jobs properly and um uh, and not remain stuck with what we already know so having said that i think that uh I think that the main issue is uh, this idea of that uh, that everybody should learn how to code, you know. And maybe the uh, the question I will make is uh, okay. So, uh, what what should we all need to learn? Uh, in that case, you know, um, should we learn uh, web development? Maybe uh, you know the basic HTML some CSS and make a, a, a pretty looking um, website, maybe. That may be the first step. I don't know. Uh, or maybe uh, people are thinking about uh, the classic programming, you know, um, writing C or C++ programs or Java or Python uh, and running the programs on uh, on the console, you know, um, with the black screen, um, with the white letters and running your program there, maybe, you know, uh, sim from hello world to, uh, basically, uh, I don't know, calculate my age or something like that. Who knows? Um, uh, command line programs, uh, have their place. A lot of Linux, uh, Unix and Linux users actually use a lot of command line programs to do complex stuff. I, I use them all the time. Um, for example, one of the programs I use the most is FFMP. Um, FFmpeg is one of those uh, command line programs that allow me to, uh, to work with video files. And uh, working with video files in a command line interface is, uh, is, is pretty weird at the start. So, but I do it. And there are many other programs that uh, are just like that, you know. Uh, but the truth is that when people think about programming and coding and they are just new on the subject, they don't imagine themselves uh, sinking in uh, 12 hours in a day, uh, writing code to just to be uh, running programs on the command line. They don't even, uh, they don't think that's part of the job to begin with most people imagine that they are going to be working on a desktop environment and uh maybe drag and dropping things <laughs> like in the movies you know but i'm digressing again i guess so getting back into the subject uh do i think that everybody should learn to code uh, i don't think so because uh not because i don't think people in general have the uh what it takes to become a coder I think everybody has what it takes, uh, but but uh, we all uh, we are all free to choose, and that's something that I think that most people don't take into consideration. Uh, maybe just because I think that programming is important, 
uh, that doesn't give me the right to demand it from other people, you know? Uh, it's like trying to make coding, um, uh, I don't know, like uh, obligatory or like, uh, like something that you have to do just like reading, writing and doing math. I don't think it's on that level. Uh, only people who is actually interested in programming should actually learn to program or to code. Uh, it, it will be a really good skill to have, um, yes, but uh, the amount of effort and time required just to be proficient on it is so great that uh, if you don't really have an interest on it, I, I don't see... Yeah, I don't see why programming should be considered even more obligatory than medicine in that case, you know? Uh, and not even medicine is, is going to be considered like a, like one of those skills that we actually need. Uh, well, we actually need them. Uh, but the truth is that we are not making mandatory medicine in high school or any other student level, you know? Because uh, the difficulty to be proficient on that is high too. It's very high. And I don't know how high it is because I'm not a doctor. Uh, but I, I am a coder and I am a programmer and I am still learning. And it's really hard. It's really hard to make things work. And, uh, and it's not an, a skill that anybody can be proficient with just listening to or just being around. Uh, no, you actually need to put a lot of effort on it. It's not one of those things that uh, a teacher can say, oh, okay, I guess you, got, uh, you, you may not understand everything, but I guess you can pass. It's not one of those skills. Um, if you just cannot make the computer do what you want it to do, uh, then it's not going to uh, any amount of uh, of a schooling or 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 I don't know what is going to be taken, um, what it requires, but no amount of money, time, or or investment from third parties is going to make you interested on it. So people that is not interested in programming on the first place, uh, that they don't see uh, making a computer do something. Um, as something interesting, uh, I don't think you you I don't think you can make those people um, good at it because it requires interest. Uh, when you get frustrated and when you get a, with a with a wall, um, then you are going to suddenly question: Is the price you're paying to learn this is uh, just way too high for you? And sometimes uh, it's, it's good to say, you know what, maybe this is not worth my effort. I want to do something else. And that's not being lazy or anything. It's just uh, that programming or coding is not for everybody. If that were the case, uh, we would have what happens when there is a lot of interest in, in, in one subject, for example, and never offered. We would have uh, uh, a lot of people offering their services on the subject, you know? But that's not the case. Actually, the contrary is the case. Uh, there is a lot of employers looking for proficient people to do the job, and there is just not enough to go around. And, and that's the truth. And that's a good thing for the people that is interested because um, if you're not an expert, you can become one, and the, and the companies are going to even help you out and pay you while you are actually becoming more than proficient, you know? And uh, the truth is that as you, uh, pick up, as you pick up a job, you're going to realize that in programming, everything changes, even databases that I consider one of the areas that doesn't really change that much. Um, the truth is that it's been changing a lot. Maybe not in the, in the language itself, uh, uh, many people are going to be talking about the SQL, but the truth is that uh, a standard SQL is close to 
to not really be in a standard anymore. Uh, as a you, as long as um, the the dream that you know what maybe if I just learn um, a standard SQL, I'm going to be able to move in between. Uh, uh, it, it's not going to matter the database engine. Uh, it, that's not really the case. Because when you start working on an actual database for an actual job, uh, a lot of things that you need to do are going to be coming from uh, the specific implementations on that database. Uh, and just the same, um, if, if you are working with web development, if you learn JavaScript uh, in a generic way, you may think, oh, well, uh, JavaScript is going to be the hardest thing on my web development career. And, and you may think that at the beginning, and then you realize that JavaScript is just uh, just like the, the gatekeeper to the entire thing. <laughs> yeah, because uh, learning HTML, you can learn HTML proficiently like in uh, in a couple of hours at most. And that's considering practicing, you know. Uh, HTML, there is not really that much on it. And then uh when somebody tells you what you actually need to do in order to i don't know um okay I, I created this beautiful website what do i need to do to charge a client uh using his or her credit card into my website how do i process payment in my website that's one of the main questions for example how do i send email how do i um create accounts for my users uh, stuff like that you know and that's when, um, and that's when you reach the point that, well, maybe just HTML and CSS is not going to be enough, you know, and client side JavaScript is obviously not going to be enough. And, and then it really hits you because you need to learn a lot of stuff. For example, if you're working with JavaScript, uh, most people are going to direct you into learning Node.js. Maybe they know. And if you are doing something else, uh, I see maybe PHP is no longer the most popular option because it was uh, it was pretty much uh, the most popular option back in the 2000s. But today, uh, it's just a laughing stock right now. Uh, there is a lot of websites running PHP though, so it's not really that. Uh, it's just like uh, everybody prefers doing something else. That you said so, uh, but anyway, uh, so I don't think that uh, you can actually, I, I don't think you anybody can actually force somebody to learn to code, you know, it has to be a, cho a, a choice. Uh, you need to choice, you need a choice to do that. Yeah, it's not going to be, uh, you cannot force it on, on people. Uh, I haven't tried it. But uh, I can realize that uh, when people actually see what it takes and, and because um, uh, for, for, for regular people that are looking at, um, at the profession from the outside, uh, it seems like magic, you know, uh, somebody types something inside a computer and the computer does something else and it looks like magic and that... Uh, how do you say it? Well, uh, that perception of mystery is going to put this, uh, uh, it's going to hide the actual complexity that the entire thing has because regular people are, are most people are not able to comprehend or imagine uh, how certain products have come to come to life, uh, come to life uh, or come to exist. And I can see that, for example, uh, video game uh, people or gamers uh, they are really good at uh, explaining how systems work inside video games uh, and they can critic those systems and how um, the mechanics work inside video games but uh, and for them some some changes may seem to them very easy to implement uh, but we never know and maybe in the background um, the mechanics are so, are so tight between together, you know, they are so linked together that, uh, that making some changes are actually quite hard to do. Uh, 
especially when the when we see uh projects for example where the source code is really spaghetti code and uh, everything is being patched up in order to do something else uh, and that happens when a demo um, for example uh, when an idea is implemented the fastest way possible not the best way and the fastest way possible tends to be the hardest way to to update you know or to change so that happens so frustration um the the very steep learning curve uh, are keeping people away yeah i guess so um but it's also true that uh the first time you do something it's going to be the worst and then when you try again with your wisdom <laughs> Um, then it's going to, you are going to have a, a, a way easier time to do that. But anyway, getting back into the topic, I digress a lot on this episode. Yeah, uh, it's always prefer to have a legitimate, uh, a legitimate interest in coding. Uh, yeah, you cannot force it on people. Uh, I see a schools on, uh, or videos in, um, on the internet uh, declaring that they can actually teach children like five years or, or uh, from five years old and they can make them programmers and I don't see how but uh, maybe one of those kids is interested in computers uh, how I was when I was a kid but uh, most people are not and uh, I believe that that's uh, one thing that um, that this millennial generation uh, is failing to do just to accept that um, younger people are making different choices and we should respect those choices, you know? I see a lot of people trying to force things into his own children. And okay, those are your children. I guess you are, uh, you're, you do you, I guess, <laughs> you know? Uh, but uh, what I see on the grand scheme of things is that, uh, well, not everybody is interested in learning to grow. Uh, and I do remember years ago when this podcast was born um, there was a drama of the journalists that uh, and these very same journalists were um, were telling these uh, coal miners that suddenly they found out themselves without a job and the journalists with that, with that cockiness they actually tell them you know what why don't you learn to code and you can work coding and you don't need to be mining coal anymore, you know? And it was funny because uh, at the time they were pretty clever saying that, you know? I thought it was uh, pretty mean, but uh, who cares? The thing is, uh, some time passed and I remember where when I wondered if was uh, the Huffington Post died or, or was bankrupt or something. And a lot of journalists uh, were losing their jobs. <laughs> and then people on Twitter were telling them to teach journalists, uh, well, maybe you should learn to code. And in that moment, it wasn't funny anymore, <laughs> at least for the journalists, you know. So they were uh, replying with things like, ah, uh, oh, this is an aggression or something like that, you know. So learning to code became a taboo on Twitter for quite some time. And uh, it was affecting me because uh, I was trying to do my thing with the podcast. And the learn to code or hash that became taboo on Twitter. Uh, and that tells me a lot of, of the people that is in charge of Twitter, even today. Um, uh, I believe that uh, I don't know exactly what's going on between Elon Musk and Twitter. But uh, I think uh, as of today... Uh, let me see what day is it. So it's Saturday, 18th, June, 2022. Uh, and I believe that uh, Elon Musk is not the owner of Twitter uh, still. I wonder if uh, he already pay up and the company is actually his, but I don't think so. So every, everything seems to be uh, still on... Um, well, it's not happening anytime soon, I guess. But the truth is, uh, well, you know, the journals at the time didn't found very didn't find very funny that people were actually mocking them 
uh, for losing their jobs. Just as themselves were mocking these uh, those miners back in the day. So they took offense and uh, Twitter actually banned a lot of people, uh, including me. I just uh, was typing hashtag learn to code and it was a banned thing at the time, you know. So it's funny when you do it, but not so much when somebody else do it to you. So that has, that's how it is. Basically like a kid. And uh, being a millennial myself, I can see, I can see that, uh, uh, well, at least myself, I didn't went to a war. I didn't have to fight in any wars, thankfully. Uh, so I don't really know what it is to, you know, uh, to be facing something like that. Uh, still, I try to do my best, you know. Uh, I try to to help the younger generation that is actually interested in coding. And I've been making some YouTube videos trying to help people in my own uh, language. I was thinking about um, years ago, I was recommending people that the first thing that they need to learn is uh, how to understand, uh, is English, basically, because programming is in English. And most people that they are going to be working on or working for, they are going to be speaking English. Um, I wonder now if that's actually the case because, uh, well, there is a lot of people here in Mexico that is try. I wonder if in Latin America, but mainly in Met I, I see in my country and I see a lot of people that they have the interest of learning programming, uh, but they are suddenly being gatekeep by this idea that they need to learn English first before anything else. Um, and when I was growing up, uh, I was learning English from playing video games. <laughs> uh, it took me around 15 years uh, to actually uh, uh, speak English uh, in a fluently enough to communicate uh, in Ventrilo. I'm talking about 2004 when the Ventrilo servers and the TeamSpeak servers were a thing back in the day. And then World of Warcraft came around in 2004. And then uh, suddenly all of these voice over IP programs were actually really useful to coordinate part big parties and raid teams in World of Warcraft. And that's how uh, I actually practice my English. Because uh, before 2004, I was really good reading and writing English uh, thanks to the internet. But uh, I was never really talking English. And when I tried to speak English for the, for the first time uh, on a Ventrilo server, um, I didn't really know how. And that's the truth. I could, understand, I, I could actually listen and understand, but I was really bad talking, <laughs> speaking it, you know. But pretty funny, but it happens. And... Uh, uh, and I got it, uh, and, I, and I learned English the hard way, you know, picking up a dictionary, listening to people without uh, subtitles and trying to understand what they say, and picking up the dictionary again, and basically doing word by word traductions, and uh, uh, pretty hard thing to do, but anyway. So getting back into the subject, yeah, I don't think everybody should learn to code. Only people interested in computers or coding should actually um, learn how to do that. Uh, I'm not saying that we should start removing computers from high school levels, uh, schools, you know. No, actually, uh, that's just fine. Uh, but this idea of forcing people to actually be proficient on that, I don't think so. Yeah, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Um, as much as it's not going to happen, that everybody should be learning how to play music. That's not going to happen. Obviously, if you have a music class on your school, that's fine. Um, and people that actually wants to be a music player or a singer, uh, they are going to follow their interest. Uh, and every single person in this world has its own judgment. They are actually going to choose um, they're going to choose what is, what is actually interesting to them. And, uh, we should respect that. 
and not and stop trying to force stuff on people. Uh, that's why um, I offer help for people on the internet and YouTube is doing a great job at that. Uh, one thing that I may like to know is uh, uh, what do people need help with? And one of my uh, new projects now is to actually create a YouTube channel uh, in Spanish and actually learn people to code uh, in Spanish. It's going to be called Foundations of Programming. Well, in Spanish, obviously. Uh, maybe I should try to do an English version of that. Uh, but I want to work with uh, the people around me first and see, because uh, because uh, even though we are all human beings, the truth is that uh, Mexico and, and the United States are two very different places with two uh, very different people. So uh, what's going on up there on, on the north is not really what's going on here in Mexico. We are yet in a, we are uh, in the middle of a crisis right now. Um, we are dealing with uh, with rampant crime going on here right now with the cartels and all of that. So most people, just like myself, that we tend to keep to the, to ourselves. Uh, I don't really go out on the street. I spend most of my time uh, here in front of the computer, uh, either working or learning something or recording my podcast and doing my videos. And I, uh, and I find some fulfillment doing that, you know? Uh, and maybe that's why I keep doing it. Uh, right now, I'm learning Python still. Um, I've been practicing this week uh, Python, and at the same time, I'm learning ten, uh, old technologies in order to, to be useful in my new job. Uh, because I got a new job, thankfully. So, something that I, uh, one thing that I'm seeing recently is that uh, uh, there is not many people interested in being a programmer. I see that a lot of young people don't really want to do uh, programming and stuff, uh, but they are really interested in social media. For example, they want to be uh, influencers. So, maybe that's not uh programming per se well it's not really programming or anything related to it it's just like uh trying to become famous in a in a platform and that's uh uh imagine that's a job basically so that's what influencers are here in mexico and um uh and i don't know any <laughs> to be honest so uh there are supposed to be a lot of people being already uh in um, popular here in mexico but uh i know i don't really know anybody yeah i don't know <laughs> but anyway i don't think they really matter to me uh but anyway well uh i guess that's it for today you know don't try to force anything on anybody and allow and respectfully allow people to do what they want to do as long as it's not nothing illegal <laughs> i guess so uh, thank you for listening, Yundidar, and see you next time.